Hello everybody. Oh, okay, this will be uh, probably my last video for this evening or tonight. Uh, should we say early a.m.? It's 1.27 a.m. my time. Yes, 9th, 26th of 2022. <laughs> but I'm kind of a night owl. But I, in between uh, the uploading of the videos, I do my housework. Then when I wake up in the morning, I don't have anything to do. Except take care of the four-leggers. And they're a job. Oh, yes. Okay. Well, I got my article that I wanted to share with you before about the trucks. So, here we go. Big change for big rigs. California unveils mandate to phase out diesel trucks. So, I don't know. Shipments of cargo leave the Port of Oakland on July 25th of 2022. California is scaling up efforts to ban diesel trucks and phase in zero emission trucks. And this, um, I hope don't get me in trouble. But, um, in other words, I had something else there. I, I'm not going to read that because it might get me in trouble. I don't know. <laughs> Another world wide first, California would require new trucks to be zero emissions in 2040. Large companies would gradually convert fleets. Truckers worry about the cost and the practicality of electric trucks. Pra practicality of electric trucks. New big rigs and other trucks will have to be zero emissions in 2040, ending their decade-long reliance on high-polluting diesel under proposed regulation unveiled by the California Air Resources Board. Under the proposal, manufacturers couldn't sell new medium-duty or heavy-duty trucks fueled by diesel or gasoline that operate in California instead turning to electric models. In addition, large trucking companies would have to gradually convert their existing fleets to zero emission vehicles, buying more over time until all are zero emissions by 2042. Another worldwide first, California aims to amp up its efforts to end the use of fossil fuels by setting requirements for clean burning big rigs garbage trucks, delivery trucks, and other large trucks. Transportation is California's largest contributor to climate warming greenhouse gases as well as smog and other air pollutants. Chris Shimoda, S-H-I-M-O-D-A, Shimoda, Senior Vice President at the California Trucking Association, which represents truck drivers says zero emission truck technology has great possibilities, but truckers worry about the practical unknowns, such as the high cost of the trucks, a lack of charging stations, and the limited range of the vehicles. We're flying blind into some pretty major questions about the practicality, pra practicality of actually implementing this rule. Shimoda said. Boy, the Air Board did not include cost estimates for the trucking companies and truck drivers in its proposal, only saying that their upfront cost would be high, but they'd save money over time. About 1.8 million heavy-duty trucks on California roads would be affected by the regulation, according to the report. The proposed rule could put about 510,000 carbon-free medium and heavy-duty vehicles on California roads in 2035 and 2035, increasing to 1.2 million in 2045, nearly 1.6 million in 2050, according to the Air Board. Currently, there are only 1,943 zero emissions medium and heavy duty vehicles on the state roads and nearly all of them are buses. 
The new truck mandate is really a critical piece of the state's climate and clean air objectives, said Patricio Portillo. Patricio, Patricio Portillo, a clean transportation advocate at the National Resources Defense Council. A common sight on California highways are trucks clogging lanes, blowing thick smoke into the sky while overheated trucks rest at the side. It is so normal that we stop thinking about it, but that exhaust prementing the air harms our lungs and bodies. But we're still living the same years. Some are living over a hundred. Some are dying young, aren't they? Still doing that these days? Middle aged? Older age? Over a hundred years, you know? We're all still here. Except for those that have passed away and lived with this for since horse and wagon delivery situations. In the early, early, early days, my grandfather uh, drove a, a horse and a, what do you want to call, wooden wagon delivering milk cans to people. When was that? In the 30s? 1930s? Or something like that? Oh, gosh. The Air Board will hold a public hearing on the proposal on October 27th after a 45-day public com comment period. It comes just a few weeks after the Air Board passed another far-reaching mandate that bans sales of gas-powered cars by 2035. California has been ratcheting, ratchet, ricocheting, or ratcheting, ratcheting, whatever, down emissions from diesel-powered trucks and buses for decades in an effort to combat the state's severe air pollution. I think the ba uh, factories are worse than the trucks and the buses. Look at all the factories that put crap in the air. Oh, I don't know. Leave me a comment, people. Just leave me a comment. See, I want to see what you think. I want to read what you think. The new proposal builds on a clean truck regulation passed in 2020, which gradually increased the number of zero emission trucks that manufacturers must sell starting in 2024. <clears throat> the provisions requiring turnover of existing fleets would apply only to federal agencies and so-called high-priority fleets, which are owned or operated by companies with 50 or more trucks or 50 million or more in annual revenue. Included are trucks weighing 10,000 pounds or more, package delivery vehicles of 8,500 pounds or more, including U.S. Postal Service, FedEx, UPS, and Amazon fleets. These large companies and federal agencies would have a choice on how to comply. They could purchase only zero emission vehicles beginning in, beginning in 2024 while retiring diesel trucks at the end of their useful life. Or they could phase in zero emission trucks as a percentage of their total fleet, starting with 10% of delivery trucks, other types that are the easiest to electrify in 2025, then ramping up to 100% between 2035 and 2042. The requirements for converting fleets would not apply to smaller companies unless they were using a larger company's trucks. They could keep their trucks as long as they want under the proposal, although their new purchases would have to be zero emission by 2040, according to Tony Brazel, Brazel Chief of the Airboard's Transportation and Technology Branch. We also believe that some of the market dynamics will probably encourage fleets to replace their trucks earlier, Brazil said, as new zero emission trucks become available and cost of operation is considerably low, lower. Cost of operation is considerably 
considerably lower. Working toward the 2040 ban on new diesel and gas trucks, the proposal has other deadlines for phasing in new sales, varying based on the type of truck. Drayage trucks, D-R-A-Y-A-G-E, drayage trucks, used largely to transport cargo from ports and railroads, railways, would have the strictest timeline. New models would be zero emission in 2024, while diesel and gas drayage trucks must retire after 18 years to guarantee that they meet a zero emission requirement by 2035. In addition, half of all new trucks purchased by state and local governments would be zero emissions in 2024, increasing to 100% by 2027. Some exemptions are allowed if there is a lack of available models. Counties with small populations, including Inyo, I-N-Y-O, Inyo, B-U-T-T-E, Butte, Medoc, Mendocino, and T-U-O-L-U-M-N-E, I can't pronounce that. Tuolumne, Tuolumne, would be exempt until 2027. Now they said countries. Oh, okay. I was going to say these names don't fit with me. <laughs> I don't know. The new rule banning sale of diesel vehicles would not apply to emergency vehicles such as ambulances. Some manufacturers have already announced plans to ramp up sales of electric truck fleets. Tesla plans to roll out electric semi-trucks with 500 miles of range later this year, while Volvo trucks and Nikola, N-I-K-O-L-A, Nikola and Company have launched electric big rigs and other models with ranges of up to 350 miles. Volvo Trucks this year set a global goal that half of its truck sales would be electric by 2030. We are determined to lead the transformation of the transport industry. Roger Elm, A-L-M, Elm, president of Volvo Trucks, said in a statement, The interest among customers is high and is quickly becoming competitive advantage for transporters to be able to offer electric, sustainable transports. But challenges with the transition remain. Many electric heavy duty trucks currently on the market still lack the range needed to transport cargo statewide and across state lines. Some vehicles like dray, drayage trucks are better suited for electrification because those vehicles may not need as long of a vehicle range, said Shim Shimoda of the California Trucking Association. But for long haulers, the mandate could pose serious problems, he said. Long haul diesel trucks can operate up to a thousand miles before needing to refill the tank, which takes 10 to 15 minutes to fill up. But electric models could have, could but electric models have to be charged often because they have this significantly shorter range and they take hours to charge. Yeah, that's a problem. The charging infra infrastructure that is necessary to support these trucks is basically non-existent today. Even the fastest available chargers right now are going to take three to four hours to charge up to full state said Shimoda, who re represents California truckers. Todd Spencer, president and CEO of the owner-operator Independent Drivers Association, says charging times of more than two hours could cause total disruption of the industry. Neither the technology nor the interstate infrastructure will be able available in the foreseeable future to support a zero emission requirement for long haul interstate trucks, he said. Some new technology, however, has already surfaced that drive, 
dramatically cuts the charging time. The newest model of the Volvo EVNR tractor trailer can recharge to 80% in just 90 minutes. That's an hour and a half, right? Yeah. The mandate also would increase demand on the state's already fragile electric grid. There's another problem. Here comes the electric grid in, into perspective now. These charging stations are going to be huge. Huge power draw, Shimoda said. To put into context, the Levi Stadium in Santa Clara on a game day uses around 300 to 350 kilowatts of power. A charging station needed for a big rig is going to be like 30 times larger. Stanley Young, an Air Resourcer Board spokesperson, said many concerns over the charging infrastructure are already being addressed under the build-out of the grid outlined in the state's proposed scoping plan, its climate change blueprint. Oh, through new model prices are high, electric trucks would need much lower maintenance cost over time compared to fossil fuel engines, which would save money to recharge with electricity than diesel. Shane Levy, a Proterra electric vehicle technology company, said the company has rapidly scaled up its battery technology in recent years. So how long have they been planning all this? This must have been in the works long before we ever heard of such a thing. I don't know. Leave me a comment. It is currently working with more than a dozen manufacturers to electrify medium and heavy-duty trucks and has delivered battery systems for more than a thousand commercial vehicles. He said the new rule could accelerate the market. Commercial vehicles are ripe for electrification, benefiting not only how we move people around cities and towns, but also how we provide goods and services to the communities we live in, he added. Some state and federal subsidy programs could also help provide relief to companies and truck drivers. Although the board provided no cost data, staff said the long-term economic net benefits are expected to save companies about $22 billion over the life of a regulation and will save more than 500,000 Californian lives between 2024 and 2050, according to Air Board staff's estimates. Oh, I'm not even going to go there. No, I'm not even going to go there. How they plan on saving 5,000 lives? I mean, just think about that. Well, maybe people that are smokers have CPOD, bron bronchular pneumonia, asthma, and there's so many others, I can't think of them right now. But they might save 5,000 of them. But when our time's up, we're going to die anyway. It's, never mind. Environmental groups. <laughs> I'm sorry. I am so sorry. But so, a thought just crossed my mind, but I'm not going to say anything about it. Environmental groups say the deadlines should be accelerated by four years from 2040 to 2036 for all sales of new zero emission trucks. Portatillo of the National Resources Defense Council says speeding up the transition would have health benefits for low income, disadvantaged communities that live near highways, rail, <laughs> rail yards and ports where trucks spew toxic diesel exhaust and smog forming pollutants take me back to the old days oh my god we used to have a burn barrel in the 50s in our yard where we could burn our garbage do you remember that we used to have burn barrels we could burn our garbage right in our yards nobody died until they were ready diesel exhaust is one of the most harmful pollutants 
that threatens California's health, containing more than 40 carcinogens as well as particles that contribute to cardiovascular and respiratory disease. I thought it was drugs. Oh well. California phases out new gas cars, so what's next for electric cars? California will re, re, uh, revaluationize the car market by ending sales of new gas cars within 12 years, forcing car buyers to switch to electric cars. We don't have a choice. We don't have a choice. That was August 25th, 2022. That came out. California mandate zero exhausted big rigs delivery trucks. Their comments begin in 2024. By 2035, 55% delivery vans and large pickups, 75% of commercial trucks, such as garbage trucks, and 40% of the big rigs sold in California must be emission free. And that was done in June 25 of 2020. Boy, I didn't know anything about that. Oh, well, I'm always late and a dollar short. <laughs> it doesn't matter to me anymore. <laughs> oh, my goodness, people. My, 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 my. Well, for the younger folks, it'll probably be all right. But for us senior citizens right now, most of us will be stars in heaven by then anyway. Yeah. I'll be 80 years old my next birthday. My goodness. But I'll keep reading until my last breath and let y'all know what I think about the situations. <laughs> okay. This is going to be good night for me. Okay. Rest well. Take care. Stay safe. Stay healthy. And I love you all so much. And God bless you. Good night.